Hello, my name is Pierluigi D'Apunto. I'm from the Chair of Structural Design at ETH Zurich. Hi, my name is Marina Constantatu, and I uh, was a PhD student at the University of Cambridge. And I'm working at the Specialist Modeling Group at uh, Foster and Partners. In this presentation, we will discuss about the extension of graphic statics to the third dimension. In particular, we will describe two approaches, the polyhedron-based one and the vector-based one. One of the most incredible examples of the elegance that can be achieved by designing following the principle of resistance through form is the Salginatobel Bridge in Switzerland by Robert Maillard. The form of the bridge directly relates to the distribution of the internal forces within the structure. In fact, for the design of the Salginatobel Bridge, Robert Maillard made extensive use of graphical methods for structural engineering, and in particular, graphic statics. Graphic statics is based on two diagrams, the form diagram and the force diagram. The first one shows the geometric layout of a loaded structure and the forces applied to it. The second one represents the equilibrium of the forces within the structure. The geometric relation between form and force diagrams represents one of the most relevant features of 2D graphic statics. This property allows adjusting one diagram and assessing the direct transformation of the other one. As such, with graphic statics, it is possible to design structures using form and forces at the same time. Graphic statics developed into an autonomous discipline during the 19th century. In this regard, particularly relevant is the contribution of Carl Kuhlmann, who firstly formalized the methodologies of graphic statics. Important contributions are due to James Clerk Maxwell and Luigi Cremona who both related graphic statics to projective geometry. Thanks to their work, Maxwell and Cremona established the mathematical base of the construction of form and force diagrams, based on the projection of higher dimension stress functions. Over the last few years, thanks to the development of computer-aided design and the emergence of new parametric digital tools, graphic statics has experienced a revival at both professional and academic levels. In this context, particularly important has been the extension of graphic statics to the third dimension. In fact, for a given 3D form diagram, like the self-stressed tetrahedron that is depicted in this picture, two alternative versions of the false diagram can be constructed, the polyhedron-based and the vector-based. So when it comes to the polyhedron-based approach, we have a structure, a special truss, like the one here, which is essentially a spoke tetrahedron, and for each one of the nodes, we have some uh, concurrent edges uh, coming in. And in this particular approach, the internal axial force of each one uh, of those uh, truss members, which are our form edges, manifests itself visually in terms of the surface area of a perpendicular face. So if we do that for each one of the nodes, which are concurrent with uh, the vertex, we end up with a closed cell, which guarantees a static equilibrium. If we do that for all the vertices, we end up with five cells and we can see the duality between the vertices of the form diagram and the, the cor corresponding cells in the force diagram. And then we can put those together to make uh, one uh, force reciprocal, which uh, as we said, each one of the faces represents the axial load of the corresponding form edge. So this has been implemented computationally in the recent years, most notably from the Block Research Group. We see some examples here. And this approach is iterative. So they're based on an optimization algorithm to converge the results which go iteratively for every form node. Another approach which we have proposed recently is the one based on projective geometry, which gives a direct way of obtaining force diagrams. Here we see the duality uh, between the form and force diagrams, what uh, we mentioned before, that the vertices correspond to force cells and that the edges correspond to force faces and vice versa. So in this approach, not only it's uh, direct, but we can also see each one of those uh, diagrams the other way around. So it can be the form or the force diagram. This idea hinges on the idea of uh, reciprocal 
objects in a more general and abstract way. So in this approach, we actually have four reciprocal objects, not only the form and the force diagram, but we also have the corresponding reciprocal four polytopic stress functions. So let's see what this means. We have our initial form diagram and we want to lift this up to the fourth dimension to derive uh, the stress function that lives on top of our structure. The way to do that is that for the, for the boundary vertices, we can leave those uh, in three-dimensional space. And then we can take this internal node, which at the moment the fourth spatial coordinate is zero, and lift it up in the fourth dimension by a number. In this way, those cells we had in three dimensions inflate while being interconnected in the fourth dimension. So now they lie in hyperplanes. What we want to do now is to map those hyperplanes to their um, reciprocal vertices. The way to do that um, is by using this uh, projective geometry construction um, of a polarity. So when it comes to four dimensional space, each vertex, which has some specific coordinates, can be mapped to a hypercell through a hyperparaboloid of revolution. So in this case, we can see uh, the equations. If we do that, uh, we derive the reciprocal for polytopic stress function. And then we can just project those down uh, orthographically to derive a form and a force diagram. We can do this construction in three ways. So we can have the purely geometrical construction, as we just saw. We can have the analytical expression. So given the, the coordinates of the vertices, we can readily find the hyperplanes. Or we can also do that in terms of the matrix representation. In this way, we can make, in a, in a direct way, a global equilibrium for structures. Some of them are quite intricate, such as tensegrities. For instance, here in the middle, we see the Jetson icosahedron. Another way that uh, we can combine, actually, those form and force diagrams is the Minkowski sum. So what we can do is that given the form and force diagrams, we can scale those while adding them vectorially. And what we get is a hybrid structure on the right, which has prisms. And those prisms have dimensions of force over length. So what they give us is that they directly give us the, the design for a constant stress design while visually giving us the information of Maxwell's load path theorem. In this animation, we see a pair of form and force diagrams. Um, in three dimensions, and we can see how the edges are perpendicular to their corresponding faces. In the vector-based 3D graphic statics, which was originally described by Maxwell, form and force diagrams are made out of closed cycles of vectors. Following a similar approach as described before, for a given structure in static equilibrium regarded as a form diagram, a vector-based force diagram can be built not by nodes. In this case, like in traditional 2D graphic statics, vectors parallel to the bars concurring in the nodes can be scaled so that they generate themselves a closed cycle of vectors. After repeating this construction for every other node of the structure, a series of closed cycles of force vectors, also known as force polygons, can be generated. These cycles can be then assembled in one unique vector-based diagram. The definition of the order of the vectors in the force cycles might be particularly complex. This is specifically the case of those form and force diagrams with underlying non-planar graphs. A special solution in this case has been developed by Andrea Michelete, who shows that form and force diagrams with underlying non-planar graph can be represented by reciprocal self-stress structures. As shown recently, in the case of a form diagram with underlying and planar graph, it is possible to generate many different possible configurations of force diagrams. Specifically, in this case, it is first necessary to planarize the underlying non-planar graph. 
This can be achieved, for example, by introducing a new vertex at the intersection of edges in the underlying and planar graph. In this way, the graph becomes planar and it is possible to cycle around the vertices of the graph in order to define the order of the vectors in the force polygons. In this way, it is possible to show that the dual graph of the planarized graph is actually the underlying graph of the force diagram. Moreover, as shown here, changing the way how the underlying graph of the form diagram is drawn leads to the definition of different configurations of the force diagram. Focusing on the vector-based radiographic static approach, the relationship between form and force diagrams can be then implemented into computational tools for the real-time transformation of the diagrams. In this way, the geometry of one of the diagrams can be modified while assessing the consequent transformation of the other diagram. To summarize, in the case of form and force diagrams with underlying and planar graphs, it is first necessary to planarize the underlying graph of the form diagram in order to construct the force diagram. This operation can be achieved in many different ways. For example, it is possible to insert new vertices in the underlying and planar graph at the intersection of the edges. Another possibility is, for example, to cast intersecting edges and connecting them to a new ideal vertex. It is important to keep in mind that this new ideal vertex doesn't have any corresponding node in the form diagram. An example of an application of uh, 3D graphic statics uh, in design is uh, one collaboration here with the University of Pennsylvania, where by using this type of reciprocal stress functions, we can derive a generative design methodology for not only obtaining form and force diagrams, but also obtaining a, a rich language of typologies. In this case, uh, this method was applied to towers. And here we can see how by changing the topology of the for polytopic stress function, we can derive a, a very different designs. An application of 3D graphic statics with a vector-based approach is shown here for the design of a pedestrian bridge. The form finding of the bridge has been done using the combinatorial equilibrium modeling. Thanks to the interdependency between form and force diagram, it is possible to manipulate one of the two diagrams and assess the consequent transformation of the other one. In this way, for example, it is possible to change the lengths of the elements in the form diagram or the magnitude of the internal forces in the force diagram. This allows to explore different structural solutions that go beyond the conventional structural typologies. Although early applications of graphic statics were limited almost exclusively to analyzing and design 2D structures, recent research focused on the extension of graphic statics to 3D. As shown in this presentation, two general strategies can be defined in this context, namely the polyhedron-based and the vector-based approaches. Through a series of examples and applications, this contribution has highlighted the similarity and difference between the two approaches.